what exactly is an SFP anyway? What is that slot that this little tiny server is going into? Well, it's kind of in the name of the abbreviation. It's a small form factor pluggable transceiver slot, SFP. So you guys remember our friend, the OSI model, right? You've probably heard it before somewhere. Even ignoring the fact that the whole OSI protocol suite is entirely obsolete, it's still kind of useful for this discussion because essentially this small form factor pluggable transceiver is the interface between layer one and layer two. So layer two, the link layer, is responsible for things like framing, serializing data buffers like bytes into ones and zeros on the wire. And so the Mac, the media access control, does that in ethernet. Then it sends those very theoretical ones and zeros to very real analog signals using the phi layer one. So normally an SFP transceiver is taking in sort of arbitrary, like theoretical ones and zeros, like very high quality ones and zeros, like definitely zeros, definitely ones, and converting it into some sort of analog encoding with optics or with line drivers. So that's voltages on the wire, photons of light, the real actual representation of those ones and zeros. So we need this choice of physical layer because there are very different options we have for sending a digital signal long distances, depending on how long the distance is, if we want to use glass fiber or copper. For example, this transceiver built in to the Smart SFP, this is a 1310 nanometer for single mode fiber. That's what I'm using it with. I got a matching 1310 nanometer plain transceiver on the other side of the link. Maybe I need an 815 nanometer multimode fiber transceiver. Maybe I want to use gigabit ethernet, which only runs over four pairs, use a trellis code, much more complicated analog encoding. Or maybe I'm using like gigabit T1, which is the automotive standard that runs over a single pair. So all of those are different physical layers, different analog line drivers that are converting the ones and zeros from the Mac into actual voltages on the wire. But of course, if we're only going a really short distance, maybe the like digital ones and zeros coming out of the Mac can actually survive for a couple of feet or something. That's what direct attached copper cables are. They use what's called a twin axe. Just send the ones and zeros straight out of the Mac, straight into another Mac on the other side of the link. 